Good afternoon. Welcome to another fantastic Cook Along Live. It's Sunday at 4.30, and I'm here to show you guys how to make some pizza. Hopefully, you had a chance to jump in, make some of that dough that I posted on, I guess, yesterday, Saturday, whatever day it was. And um, you guys are ready to cook along and make some awesome homemade pizza. So, first things first, we're going to get started with a little bit of a moisturizer. Definitely got to make sure that the chef is properly hydrated. And how has everybody else's week been? I'm drinking a delicious stout from Founders called KBS. And uh, this is one that I was introduced while I was working at, introduced to while I was working over at World of Beer. So first things first, you guys might have seen some instructions on that intro screen. It said to get your oven cranked up as hot as it will go. Um, you really, really want a hot oven when you're making pizza. We're going to be doing uh, Neapolitan style pizza. So it's going to be the thin crust pizza with the crispy, crispy pizza uh, crust and uh, all the ingredients kind of dotted on top. So got a lot of the ingredients set up here in front of me and uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Mm -hmm. All right. First step, if you made your pizza dough already, which you should have, or if you've picked it up from the market, depending on how you wanted to get started on tonight's cook along, go ahead and pull it out. And we're just going to let it kind of sit at room temperature and relax a bit. So switch over here. You guys can see the doughs that I made. They've been in the fridge for about two days. Um, I made these on, um, I guess it was Friday night. And so they've expanded just a little bit. If you made these yesterday, they're not going to be quite as big. Not a problem. Doesn't make a difference. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to grab this one right here. And it's gotten quite a bit more damp. So what I'm going to do is just dust my hands with a little bit of flour so that when I handle it, it does not stick too bad. I'm also going to go ahead and dust the area on my cutting board where I'm going to set it. I'm going to go ahead and put these other two guys back in the fridge and we're going to leave them in there until I make my next pizza, probably tomorrow night because I've got a lot of dough. Now we ideally want to let this sit for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes just to kind of let it uh, Relax, come up to room temperature. It's fine to get flour on the outside. This is really just to uh, kind of bring it up to temperature. Because when you're cooking something cold in the oven, if it's still cold, it's actually going to bring the entire temperature of the oven down, and it's not going to cook evenly. So we want this to be kind of, we call it tempering, coming up to room temperature. And uh, same kind of uh, technique that we used on the steak when we did that back in one of our first cook-alongs. So we're gonna get started with all of this. And once we've got this out and we got it kind of sitting, we gotta make sure our oven is on and, and cranked up as high as it'll go. Make sure that your pizza stone is in there as well. I've actually got two pizza stones. One on the top, which is the one that we're gonna be cooking on, and one on the bottom rack, and uh, cast iron stuff in there. And that's just to add mass to the oven so that when you open up and close the door, you don't lose as much heat. So it takes a little bit longer to heat up but it gives you a more consistent temperature in the oven. And we really do want this cranked up pretty, pretty high. While we're waiting on that to happen and while we're waiting on this to kind of come up to temperature, we're gonna start on our pizza sauce. And the pizza sauce tonight is super easy. It's really just putting some ingredients into a bowl and mixing. There's no cooking involved. If you wanted to get a little bit more, I don't know, bougie, I guess, you could always go ahead and uh, get some fresh garlic, cook it down with some olive oil, throw in your tomato sauce. The problem with those sauces is they actually tend to pale up a little bit as you uh, kind of, after you blend them together, they tend to turn orange instead of staying a nice bright red. So I decided to go with a non-cook pizza sauce for tonight. First thing, we're going to take our 15 ounces of tomato sauce. We're going to add six ounces of tomato paste to it. And we're not in any rush because we gotta wait for the oven to go up. And we also gotta wait for our dough to kinda come up to temperature. I like to use a flat knife to scoop out the uh, tomato paste. Just makes it kinda easy. If you have one of those squeeze bottles, measure out six ounces of your tomato paste. There we are. Set this over here with the rest of the recycle. We'll see how this knife does it, mixing this together. You basically want to get this 
mixed in until there's no lumps. The tomato paste is going to thicken up the tomato sauce a bit and give it a little bit more concentrated tomato flavor. And of course you're going to spread sauce all over your cutting board because you picked a bowl that was slightly too small. So let me do this. <laughs> Even though we're not actually cooking, I'm just going to go ahead and use my nonstick pot and a spatula. We'll scrape all of the tomato sauce out of the bowl into our pot. Perfect. Put the bowl on the side. We'll just scoop up whatever we can from the cutting board. <laughs> There we go. And now we're just going to mix this together until it's nice and smooth. You don't want any lumps from the tomato paste. Get it as smooth as you possibly can. And be careful when you're kind of mashing it up against the sides because that's when it tends to kind of slingshot out. So just gently kind of incorporate the paste into the sauce, and you're going to notice that it's thickening up quite a bit um, just from the addition of the thicker paste. Hey, Michael, what's up, man? And Stu, how's it going, guys? Chat UI is not on the stream. You are right. Interesting. How is that? There we go. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know that. Sometimes I don't look at the monitor and notice what's going on. All right, so that looks pretty smooth. You can get as much off of the spatula as you can. And then I've got all of my little herbs. I just put it in this little bowl here. So I've got uh, oregano, Italian seasoning, uh, garlic salt, garlic powder, onion powder. I added a little bit of uh, red pepper flakes because I like to add a little bit of, I mean, if I get a pizza from like anywhere, I usually add red pepper flakes. Uh, in this case, I'm actually just going to put them in the, in the sauce, and then I don't have to add them after the fact. Um, and then about a little bit of sugar on there as well. All the amounts are uh, in the post for this video, as well as uh, on Instagram and everywhere else. So I'm really just going to go ahead and dump all of that in, and then just make sure to incorporate it fully. Let me get that knife out of my way. <laughs> How's everybody's week been? Anything, uh, anything fun and exciting going on? Anything coming up this week that's going to be fun and exciting? We had an awesome thing called Mega Camp for Keller Williams, and it was a uh, basically a three-day virtual convention. Usually we hold it in person, but they did a phenomenal job of uh, coming up with a virtual solution for it was on a custom platform that was really, really set up well for the type of uh, information that they gave us. And so really, really awesome stuff. Cool. We got that mixed together. I'll set that over on the side again. Go ahead and give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a taste. Just make sure it's seasoned properly. Perfect. already nice and salty and everything. I'm really just gonna sit this on the side. We're not gonna be cooking any of that. I just used the uh, pot to get a little bit of a bigger vessel for mixing, since my little bowl wasn't quite cutting it. Do, 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 do. There we are. That off. Now we're gonna be kind of flattening out our dough on our cutting board. So if you used it for cutting or if you have any kind of moisture on it, you really are gonna to wanna to kind of dry it off as much as you can. Uh, get it as dry as you possibly can. The oven is coming up to temperature. Before we start playing with our dough, my dough's still a little bit cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and start working on mine. As much as I'm sure you guys would love to just watch me stand here and talk to you, 
we're going to get along. We're just going to keep going with our with our cook along. Plus, as we're working the dough, it's going to relax and kind of warm up as well. There we go. Make sure our hands are nice and floury. Make sure the cutting board is nice and floury. And really what we're going to start doing is start from the center and just kind of, number one, let the weight of the dough as it's kind of hanging drop, as well as kind of pull it apart so that you start stretching it. Your goal is to get this to be about, I don't know, 14-ish inches around and to have a nice border on the outside. So don't, don't crush the, the outer rim. You really kind of want to make sure that that stays nice and uh, kind of fluffy while the center gets thinned out. So I like to kind of use my thumbs to begin with and just kind of go around in a circle like this. And what that does is stretches out the middle with the weight of the dough while keeping the outside nice and, I don't know if plump is the right word, but you want to definitely have a border there. There we go. I've got a nice little bubble over here. I'll go ahead and just Pop it, and we'll flip it upside down. Because as you stretch this, some of the moisture is going to come out, and so you want to kind of keep everything nice and dry. Now, that brings up a good point. Right now, the dough is actually fairly relaxed, so when you stretch it, it should stay stretched for the most part. It might come back a little bit, but for the most part, it's going to stay nice and stretched out. When you, if you've ever been working with dough in the past and you notice that the dough kind of like collapses back in itself, back in on itself, once you set it down, it's because the dough, the gluten in the dough is still uh, tight. So it's, it's, not, it's not relaxed. I mean, that's why they use the word relaxed. Um, so it tends to kind of collapse back in on itself. You're just going to kind of do this until you get the dough as big as you want it to be. Another way to do it is put your knuckles underneath the dough and kind of stretch it sideways like, like this. And of course you can flip it, but that's not something that I'm gonna be doing. Cool, Annika, I wish I could hear you. One of these days I should set this thing up so that it's on, uh, on uh, Zoom. What is that service that everybody keeps using right now? To get a Zoom room up or something, or like a chat room, and have people be able to actually talk with me instead of just the instead of just the uh, text. So I'm going to now kind of manually stretch out some of the some of the bits of the dough that are visibly a little bit thicker. Like I can actually see. I don't know if you guys can see it on the on the stream, but I can actually see my my fingers through the dough is how thin it's getting, and that's perfectly fine. So all the areas where it looks thicker than that, I'm actually going to kind of manually go through and stretch. And if you accidentally tear your dough, that's fine. Just kind of hold it over and press it down so that it sticks together. But the thinner you can get it, the better. Cool, cool. It's a nice little... Circle of dough. And then just keep working it. Remember, just be patient with it. You don't have to rush this. Pizza is worth waiting for. Especially when you're making it yourself. Cool. So that's a good sized piece of pizza. Nice little circle. Probably stretch out a bit more on this side. And I was talking about the dough relaxing versus being a little bit too um, elastic if you don't let it rest long enough. The dough is still going to shrink a little bit. This just makes it a lot easier when you let it when you let it have a chance to relax. All right. Now I'm gonna have I'm gonna put mine on this little peel, which is about the same size as the dough. If you don't have a peel, use a baking sheet. If you don't have a, a, a a pizza stone for your oven, use a baking sheet. Uh, you don't want to put this on the rack because it's just going to droop through it. You do want that nice flat surface and we're actually going to turn the broiler on before we put this in just to preheat that surface so that when we slide it in it immediately starts cooking. Um, before we put this on our pizza peel, you can use a metal one, you can use a, a composite one like the one that I have here. does not matter at all. This one was cheaper, which is why I got it. 
and it works just fine. The metal ones are also awesome. You can use flour here, which is what I'm doing, or if you want, you can use semolina flour, which is uh, like the harder pasta flour, or corn uh, cornmeal, either one. I'm just gonna kind of lift up this side and then slide and dress, or I guess you can just pick it up and do this. I wanna make things harder than they need to be. You want your pizza to be just a little bit smaller than the peel. If you notice any big bubbles, go ahead and just kind of give them a pop, but not super necessary. Cool. We got our pizza. It's sliding around on the peel, which is what you want. Now we can start with our tomato sauce. Now, anything that you put the tomato sauce on is not, thank you, Christina. Anything that you put the tomato sauce on is not going to, it's gonna be harder for it to bubble up. Uh, so the edges you wanna keep dry and you just wanna start in the middle and then kind of swirl it out from there and then have a nice even layer uh, around the middle of the pizza. And then we'll start with our, our toppings here. And I've got a couple of different toppings. These are just what I like putting on my pizza. If you like anchovies on yours, go ahead and put some anchovies on. If you want, uh, Anything that's not in my list, go for it. It's your pizza. You can do what you want. Um, what do I want? Go ahead and use one of my little ladles here. Go ahead and get a nice little scoop of my sauce. I'm just going to plop it right in the middle. And then I'm going to use the bottom of the ladle. Kind of spread it around. If you don't have a ladle, just use a spoon. It works just as, you know, just the same. I might need another ladle full or two. Always start in the middle. I know it's tempting to kind of like go in and fill in the edges, but don't do that. Just start in the middle. Trust me, I've uh, ruined many a pizza by going, oh, I can just put a little bit right there. And nope, never quite works out that way. There we go, just a nice gentle pressure. Get the pizza sauce out. And then you really just wanna just barely stop before the edge. And you'll get a nice bubbly edge and the rest of the pizza will stay kinda down. We're gonna go almost, yeah, like leave maybe a centimeter or a half an inch. If you don't know what a centimeter is. Quarter inch to a half an inch of space around the outside. Here we are. Just like painting a picture. My dog is growling at something, but I don't know what. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and perfect. How does that look? Looks like a pretty good pizza for me. Carmen, I need some chorizo. So if you're interested in driving me up some chorizo, I would love to make your chorizo con papa pizza because that thing looked amazing. By the way, everybody, Carmen is a, a associate of mine who uh, works down in the uh, um, North Tustin area of California, and she is also uh, an amazing chef. So I don't, I don't know. Go look her up on Instagram and uh, see what she's cooking because she cooks, cooks a lot of really good food. Mm -hmm. All right. Next step, we got our sauce on the dough. We're gonna start with our cheese. Don't over cheese your pizza. I see so many people put like piles and piles of cheese on this, and what ends up happening is all the oil from the cheese comes out and makes the pizza super soggy. So you do want a nice layer of cheese on your pizza. 
but you don't need it to be perfectly uniform. You don't need it to be like an inch thick. Uh, really, you just kind of want to do a nice dusting of cheese. And do it from a height. You get a, a better coverage, like so. And I'm actually going to be doing both this nice dry mozzarella, low moisture mozzarella, which is great for uh, melting. And I've also got some fresh mozzarella over here that we're going to dot it with. So, and I've got those on a towel draining because the fresh mozzarella tends to release a lot of moisture. And that is not necessarily what you want if you want a nice crispy crust. Cool. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just uh, get, a, get good coverage. There we go. Now, let's see, do I want to do the mozzarella first? Or do I want to do, what do I want to do, what do I want to do? Yeah, I'll put the mozzarella pieces down. I'm just going to lay these in about an inch from the edge, because again, you don't want that moisture getting to the uh, edges of the pizza, because you want that to kind of balloon up. <laughs> Make it a nice, nice uniform circle of cheese. Any cheese is awesome, but when it's arranged in a circle, it's even better. I don't know why I just made that up. All right, now I'm gonna put some basil on here, and I'm just gonna take my basil and really just kind of tear it up. Fresh basil. And yes, this is gonna kind of scorch a little bit, but that's fine. If you don't want that flavor, go ahead and wait until you pull the pizza out and um, have the basil ready to go, and then you can just drop it on the top. The pizza will be warm enough to wilt it, but not scorch it. And I'm going to actually do a combination of both here. Do like this. Ripping the basil. There's, I mean, you can cut it up if you want. This is just uh, makes it look a little bit more rustic. And when it looks more rustic, it looks more impressive. I'm hooking y'all up for date night, by the way. Let's see, we'll do that, and then we'll go there. Perfect. Now, I love olives on my pizza, and I've got both Kalamata olives, as well as Castle Vestrano, or Castle Vetrano, or whatever they are, olives. And I just usually chop them in half, unless they're a gigantic olive, at which point I will uh, slice them into little rounds. But we're just going to kind of dot these around. Again, I've kind of drained these off because olives tend to have a lot of moisture. The more moisture you have on the pizza, the uh, more soggy it's going to be, or the soggier it has the potential to be, I should say. We are. Get a couple more Kalamatas because it seems like my green olives are taken over. There we go. And now for the pepperoni. And these guys just dotted around. And really the placement and the amount is completely up to you. This is your pizza. The only people who are going to critique you on it are the ones eating it. And that includes you. So just make it look the way you want it to look. And then based on whatever you put on it, you're, you're basically setting up how it's going to taste. Cool. So this is done. Uh, those are all the toppings for my pizza. Let's see where we are on this. 490. Let's do broil high. We'll let that really kind of come up to temperature. Cool. Who is cooking pizza along with me tonight? Anybody? Or was that just me doing all that work for nothing? Hey, Jesse, how's it going? Ooh, yes, crushed garlic is amazing. Yeah, half an Oreo. I, I understand that. Some people don't like olives. Some people don't like pepperoni or, or real cheese. They actually want to make a vegan pizza, which is cool. If you want to do vegan cheese, as long as you find something that's nice and melty, go for it. Um, or pepperoni or anchovies. I'm not an anchovy fan, but I do know that people enjoy anchovies on their pizza. 
they're more than welcome to do whatever they want. I'm not going to eat any of that pizza, but they can enjoy it all they want. Hey, Laura, how's it going? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. <clears throat> and half an Oreo. This is really just uh, a Neapolitan-style pizza. It doesn't really have a name. I'm just uh, making a pizza. I don't think that uh, I don't think we should have constraints, man. Um, but all of that aside, yeah, pizza is really whatever you want to make of it. Hmm. I really love olives. And I'm just waiting for the broiler to kind of kick on and really warm that pizza stone up before we slide it in there. So, ah, war hamster. You could do a midnight snack. Come on, man. Or woman. I don't know if you are male or female. Hmm. So if it's 1 a.m., are you, I, I assume it's 1 a.m. Monday morning for you. So are you uh, just kind of chilling in bed, watching some cooking? Making sure that it's nice and loose. What do you guys got planned for the week? I'm basically going to be tending my garden. Uh, we finally can breathe outside, so I can go and water it without wearing a mask, which is nice. This is a stout. Um, where did I put the bottle? Ah, right here. So I'm drinking uh, Founders KBS, which is a really nice stout. Um, breakfast stout, very kind of chocolatey and coffee-y, and um, really tasty. I'm not usually a dark beer drinker. I like IPAs and, and uh, things that have a little bit more hoppy flavor, but this is a really good stout. Mm-hmm. Definitely, Cersei. I love this particular one. There's a couple of other ones from, like, uh, Cigar City Brewing that are really good. Um. <laughs> Garlic and ginger pre-cooked, yeah. All right, let's see how our oven is doing. Broiler is on, so I'm gonna let that go for just another minute or so. You really want the pizza stone hot. The heat from the bottom is gonna cook the bread, and the heat from the top, or the heat in the oven, I should say, the residual heat in the oven, is what's gonna kinda cook everything on top of the pizza. We're gonna turn the broiler off before we throw the pizza in there, or slide the pizza in there. And we're going to let it cook for, I don't know, maybe a minute, two minutes. And then we're going to kick the broiler back on to really get the top cooked. And then we're going to pull it out about a minute later. So, uh, but we do want that stone very, very hot. If you don't have a pizza stone, um, like I said, use a baking sheet. If you have a flat baking sheet, that works the best. Uh, however, I would recommend getting a pizza stone because they hold their heat very, very well. And, uh, I mean, they're specifically made for pizza, so... Might as well. Oh, thank you, Warhamster. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So all of the recipes that I use, um, I do tend to find online and then kind of customize and tweak. Uh, I think anybody who does cooking does that as well. So um, if I pull a, a recipe directly from anywhere, uh, I will tell you exactly where I got it from. I did use the Chef Steps uh, pizza dough recipe. So if you guys know what Chef Steps is, that's where I got the dough recipe from. As far as the toppings on the pizza, you can really use whatever you want. And the no-cook pizza sauce I got from joyfoodsunshine.com. So she also has some really good recipes and a lot of really cool stuff in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the broiler, but we're gonna go back to bake at 550. And once that kicks on, we will slide our pizza in. Make sure your pizza is moving on the peel before you put it in the oven. Blowing on the edge to kind of make it flutter is one way to loosen it, and then just kind of keep it sliding back and forth until you open it and get it in there. That's it, really quick. Open the oven, slide the pizza down on the stone, and we're going to give it about two minutes. What do you guys want to see on another Cook Along Live? I've done pizza. Uh, what haven't I done that you guys want to see?
And we did a little bit of an experiment with this one, so let me know how you liked it, getting the pizza dough kind of done on uh, during the week before, and then kind of leading into the actual cook-along with dough that we've made ourselves, but in a non-live environment. So if you guys didn't see that video, um, it is in the playlist that I have on YouTube for cook-along lives, and it's called the Pizza Pre-Show. So go take a look at that. I'm uh, just kind of curious what you guys think about that format. If that works uh, for you all, it opens up a little bit more uh, possibilities for what kinds of foods I can do since we can do them in stages as opposed to just having to do one thing on a cook-along live. All right. Take a quick peek. The edges of the pizza are bubbling up. Actually, let me do this. Do, 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 do. Bear with me for just a second while I do that. And I do this. And cool. Now you guys got the sync cam. You guys can see that I was using my phone for it. Go ahead and take a look at our pizza. So in the oven, take a quick peek, like so. And you'll notice the edges are starting to cook. It's starting to rise a little bit, but I don't want to keep the oven open very much longer because uh, you're releasing all the heat. Let's switch back to here. I'll turn that off for now. I'm going to let that go for another minute or so, and then we're going to crank up the broiler, let the broiler kind of cook the top part of the pizza, which is where all the ingredients are, for about another minute, minute and a half, 90-ish seconds, and then we'll pull it out. So one of the problems with um, home ovens, they don't get as hot as like a pizza oven does. Those usually get up to like 700 to 900 degrees, and um, they usually use just burning wood in, in the back corner, and it also creates kind of a rolling uh, heat wave airflow inside of itself, and that is perfect for cooking pizza. The surface of the pizza oven gets ripping hot. The air inside the pizza oven is, you know, like I said, 700 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Most home ovens just can't go that high. So the issue or the problem with home ovens is it takes too long to cook the pizza. It, it doesn't get the same kind of caramelization on the bottom of the bread. The tops don't get super cooked. We're trying to mimic that here with the broiler. Um, and it works pretty well. Go ahead and kick that buddy on, broil on high. And I'm gonna go ahead and spin my pizza around as well. The back of the oven tends to be warmer than the front of the oven, so spinning your pizza around 180 degrees is a great way to just make sure that both sides of the pizza get cooked evenly. Hey, Ryan, what's up, man? Yeah, the Thanksgiving dinner, I'm still kind of, or the Christmas dinner, we're, we're still kind of, I'm still kind of thinking about how to make that work, um, either to do it in stages or just to have a live stream going all day. Um, and just cook things, you know, as I go and say, hey, cool, we're going to do this next. Let's keep doing it. Let's... My, my sister is actually supposed to um, deliver my, my uh, nephew uh, that, that week or very close to it. So I might be doing it from their house and uh, cooking them Thanksgiving dinner since they won't be able to go anywhere. But we'll see. We'll see how all that works. Might work that way, might not work out that way. And we're going to let that broil for just a little bit longer. You'll notice that I'm not opening the oven door. I mean, other than to, like swirl the pizza around or to give you guys a peek at what looks like in there, you really want to keep your oven door closed. Every time you open it, you're creating a vacuum and you're actually sucking more hot air out than you think. So the oven drops in temperature and things aren't quite cooking where you think they are. So if you've ever run into the problem where things just seem like they're cooking forever because you keep opening the oven and peeking, that's probably why. Try to keep the oven closed if at all possible and only open it if you're actually going to be doing something to what's inside the oven. I'm sure you all knew that, but just figured I'd mention it in case you, uh, in case you were running into any issues. 
Mm-hmm. Good beer, good beer. And that all looks good. Getting some browning around the edges. We're going to go just a little bit longer, and then we'll slide our pizza out. <clears throat> now, I am a huge fan of the Neapolitan-style pizza, where it's nice and thin crust, and everything is nice and crispy all around. If you want to make a thicker crust pizza, you're going to leave it in the oven for longer than what we're doing. Um, it should still bake pretty quick. So rather than like the five minutes that it's taking here, uh, it might take seven or eight, but it should still cook very quickly. So just keep that in mind. And that looks amazing. I'm going to spin it around one more time. Like so. And I'm actually going to do this again. Give you guys a peek at what it looks like from this angle. Check that out. Now that's what I call a pizza. So you'll notice we're getting some nice browning on, or some nice blackening, I should say, on the right hand side over there. Also kind of on this front corner. The pizza's really only got another, I don't know, 30 seconds. Let me show you how we're flipping it around, just so you can see it from this angle. So holding my camera, we're basically just sliding the, the peel underneath the pizza and then just rotating it a bit, coming at it from a different angle, sliding it under, rotating a bit, sliding it under. So you're basically just kind of like, you know, slowly rotating it bit by bit. Our pizza is done, so we're just going to go right underneath it, slide it out, and there we go. Beautiful pizza. Do that. Get that closed. We'll turn our oven off. I'm only making one pizza for myself. As much as I love the quarantine 15, I think I want to try and limit it at the quarantine 15 and not get up to the quarantine 25. That might not be very, not might not be a very good look, but here is our pizza. Check this out. Everything is nice and browned, nice and caramelized. Looks amazing. What we're going to do is let it rest for, I don't know, probably five minutes. I mean, this is liquid magma hot right now. So we're going to let it kind of sit and rest. Let me go ahead and do this again. This just gives me a little bit more control over what you guys are able to see as far as the pizza goes. And... It looks delicious. So let's take a quick look underneath. So generally speaking, if the pizza is perfect, on the bottom side, you're going to have like a leopard pattern. Uh, we didn't let our pizza stone get hot enough, so it didn't actually do that. But uh, on the cooker cam, you mean the cam that I'm holding right now, Warhamster? Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the camera up above, this one right here, I, I don't know why, but the sensor's kind of washed out. And I can't find a color setting, and the white balance setting doesn't work the way that I would expect it to. So, you know what? Maybe there's a firmware update. I actually haven't looked into that. And uh, this camera up here is actually, I don't know, 12 years old-ish? Pretty old. It's a, it's, a, it's a Canon Vixia HD60. So it's got like a hard drive in it. It's one of the really old camcorder-style cameras. Um, that was one of the first cameras, first video cameras uh, I ever got for myself. So um, we're going to let this kind of relax a little bit. I'm going to put some fresh basil on it as well. So we're going to have a little bit of uh, flavor from the kind of caramelized burnt basil. And then we're going to have some nice light fresh flavor from some of this non-burnt basil. And really, it's going to be up to you. If you don't want basil on your pizza or if you don't like the burnt flavor, Wait until the end to put your, ba uh, your basil on. One extra piece right there. there. If you want mushrooms on your pizza, <clears throat> if you want mushrooms on your pizza, do that as well. Throw mushrooms on before you throw it in the oven. Make sure your mushrooms are cut really, really thin. Hey, thanks, Kim. So here's this, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut into our pizza. 
If you feel from the bottom, it's not soggy. We're just going to start from this end over here, and you want to cut, cut through and then just very surely cut all the way through the pizza in one motion. And that will get you your nice, nice slices here. And then we'll go perpendicular to the first cut. There we go. And then kind of diagonal like so. Perfect. Keep rotating it. And then we will cut right up the center that way. And there we go. Some delicious homemade pizza. Done. Now, of course, I've got to get the Instagram photo, so give me just a second. And the cool thing with this is um, the pizza's, you know, cooked all the way through. All the stuff on the top is nice and caramelized and yummy. Um, and it is definitely photo-worthy. There's that. Let me go back just a little bit because I know that Instagram's going to want to square. Perfect. All right. Bite into this bad boy. Let's see how it tastes. <laughs> mm hmm. Yum. Dropped an olive. You cannot escape me, Mr. Olive. Mm. Grab a little bit of a napkin. You can see that there's quite a bit of oil from the pepperoni and from the cheese. Again, if you put way too much cheese on this, it's just going to be like a gross puddle of oil. This isn't too bad, although it is probably still a little bit more than I would like. Mm. But the cheese is delicious. Pepperoni is nicely burnt. The crust is crispy. Delicious. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Kim. I can totally agree with that and understand it. Hmm. And somehow I did not burn the top of my mouth eating this pizza. And that's kind of the important part of letting it rest. You don't have to let it rest very long. It's a really thin pizza. Five minutes will do it. It'll be still hot, but uh, not liquid magma hot, so you'll maintain the roof of your mouth. And it goes perfect with this delicious stout. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. That's the end of another Cook Along Live. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment, hit the button down below, do whatever. Um, if you want to try this yourself, I highly recommend it. Go follow me on Instagram and uh, leave me a picture. Uh, mention me in your, in your post or on Facebook or wherever. And I'd love to see what you guys come up with uh, as far as your pizza goes. Uh, the video to make the dough uh, was posted on Friday. It's in the same playlist as this video will be. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called Cook Along Lives. And that's where I've put all, I think this is episode 27. Last week was six months. So we've been doing this for six months, which is both awesome and kind of sad because this started as a shelter in place thing. Um, however, yeah, it's been great. I've, I've enjoyed cooking for everybody and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. And yeah, subscribe, find me on the internet. Uh, at the end of this, you're gonna have, you're gonna see me really quickly slide in uh, some social media stuff on the end card. And uh, feel free to go in and look me up elsewhere on the internets and subscribe to me there. Uh, I post a lot of cooking photos, uh, little snippets and stories and things like that, as well as aviation-related stuff. So um, have a happy Sunday. And uh, we're about halfway through with September, so let's open October up with the bang. And let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me cook next, because um, I always like making stuff that other people want to see me make. So Have a great one, everybody. Bye.